Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of the Nguzo Babies podcast. Today's story is called The Camp Out. Let's begin. Today was a different day. The Nguzo Babies decided to spend the evening camping in the forest. They enjoyed playing during the day, but there was something fun about grabbing their tents and sleeping bags for a sleepover. Equia had her reservations, though. She loved heading to the forest with the group, but she wasn't always crazy about doing an overnight. I get spooked, she said as the friends gathered together. Don't worry about it, Equia, said Ama. We're all here together, remember? Plus, we can literally see my house from here. If a troll comes to get us, we can scream and my mom will jump over the fence, said Quasi. Our friends set up their camping spot and got comfortable on a few logs. Hey, want to hear a spooky story, Kofi asked. No way, protested Equia. Oh, come on, Equia, it's just a story. Ugh, fine, go ahead. But the minute I'm super scared, you have to stop. You can hold my hand if it makes you feel better, said Ya. Thank you, Ya, said Equia. Ugh, can we get started already? asked Abinai impatiently. Okay, started Kofi. Our story begins in the forest. Ugh, are you kidding me? cried Equia. Equia! The rest of the baby scolded. All right, all right. Go ahead, said Equia. Kofi continued. Gemma and Louise were brother and sister. They had been walking in the forest, and they could hear footsteps. Crunch, 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 went the leaves. They looked all around and couldn't figure out where the footsteps were coming from. They looked up and saw nothing. They looked down and saw nothing. They looked to the left and saw nothing. They looked to the right. (gasps) It was a squirrel. They began to walk some more. Suddenly, a clap of thunder burst through the sky. (sighs) They knew they had to get back. They knew they had to get back to their cabin before it was too late. Kofi, shouted Equia, this story is way too scary. Oh, come on, Equia. It was just getting good, shouted Abana. Keep going, said Ama. Okay, continued Kofi. As the friends began to run to find their cabin, they could hear the footsteps coming closer behind them. They were too scared to keep looking. All they wanted to do was get back to their cabin safely. So they ran. And the footsteps kept getting closer. And the rain poured harder. They could feel the footsteps. They could feel someone chasing them. They finally got to the cabin and tried to get in, but the door was locked. (gasps) They didn't have the key. Oh, I really don't like this story, interrupted Equia. Shh, said Kojo. They banged on the door, Kofi continued. They could feel someone getting closer and closer behind them. Hey, someone shouted. They turned around and saw a little girl. You dropped your key, she said. She handed the key to Gemma. Gemma was stunned because she didn't see her as they ran the whole time. Louise grabbed the key from Gemma and unlocked the door. Gemma ran inside. Louise turned around to say thank you. But it was then that he noticed the girl had vanished. As Kofi finished his story, The rest of the Nguzo babies looked at him in shock. That was amazing, shouted Kwesi. Let's do another, shouted Ya. That wasn't too bad, said Equia. Yeah, right, said Abana. You're a chicken. Hmm, I wonder though. Magic land is where all of our imagination goes, right, said Abana. They all agreed. I've got an idea. It's time to put the candles in, she said. The friends all looked at each other with an eager level of excitement, except Equia. She liked going to Magic Land, 
but she wasn't sure of what they'd find on the other side this time. But still, she trusted her friends, so she pulled out her candle. One by one, each of the Nguzo babies began to place their candle into the Kinara. The world around them began to change. As with every time they headed to Magic Land, they climbed the winding staircase. They passed the zebras and elephants until they made their way to the other side. This time, upon walking through the doors, the friends found themselves in the middle of a vast and luxurious field of sunflowers. Everywhere they turned, they could see the most beautiful sunflowers. Oh my goodness, my favorite! I just love sunflowers, said Ya. This is magnificent, said Ama. I've never seen anything like this, shouted Kwesi. Me neither, said Kojo. Suddenly, in the distance, the Nguzo babies could see a girl in the distance running towards them. Hey, who's that? asked Abina. Uh, I don't know, said Equia. Hey, hey, you guys, you forgot your key, shouted the girl. What key? asked Kojo. This key. The girl, held, the girl held out her hand with a small golden key and handed it to Kofi. Isn't this yours, Kofi? The girl asked. Mine? My key? He asked. And how do you know my name? Wait a minute, shouted Equia. The key like in your story? Oh no, shouted Kofi. This isn't mine. Just then, they heard an angry voice shout at them in the distance. Give me back that key, young man! He was small, but fiercely terrifying. He had scaly green skin with golden hair that stood the, to the tops of the mountains. He was round, he was loud, and he was very angry. He was a troll. Oh no! shouted Ya. Let's go! yelled Kojo. Kojo grabbed Kofi's hand and began to run. All of the Nguzo babies and the little girl began to run as fast as they could. Through the sunflower meadow and deep into the pine forest, the leaves began to crunch beneath their feet. Though they tried their hardest, the troll was gaining speed. Wait! yelled Equia. My magic! Equia snapped her fingers and out popped her giant glob of slime. <laughs> Whoa, that's pretty cool, said Abana. Equia stretched her arm far back and threw the big glob at the troll's feet. As soon as it landed on his body, the troll couldn't go anywhere. He was stuck. Yeah, get this stuff off of me, he yelled. Hooray, you did it, shouted the girl. That mean old troll, he's the green gobbler. All he does is sit in his lettuce patch and eat all day. That's why he's so green. Lettuce? Ugh! Gross, said Quasi. If you could eat cookies all day, Quasi, you would, said Ama. Yep, but what are we going to do about the troll now, asked Quasi. I gave you my glob to stop him, and now I'm all out of ideas, said Equia. Kofi, I bet you can do it, said the girl. Again, how do you know my name, asked Kofi. I'm Gemma, remember? Oh no, it is my story, said Kofi. I told you, exclaimed Equia. I don't know what to do, said Kofi. Where's Fairy Ashley Winnie Neater? asked Kojo. Sure enough, a wind of fairy dust swam in a circle and there appeared Fairy Ashley. Well, hello, Wingoozle Babies. I see you've met Gemma. Hi, Fairy Ashley. They greeted her in unison. Oh my, it looks like we've got some trouble with the green gobbler. Did you take some of his lettuce? Ew, no way, said Quasi. Kofi took his key, said Abna. I didn't take it. Gemma gave it to me. But it belongs to you, right? Said Gemma. No, in my story, it was your key. That's not how my story went. This is all mixed up. Hmm. Well, that's simple enough. When there's a misunderstanding, what can you do to fix it? Asked Fairy Ashley. Talk to him, said Equia. What? Asked Kofi. Why don't you talk to him? All right, let's go together, said Equia. 
I'm feeling a little bit brave now that I stopped him in his tracks. Kofi and Equia led the group closer to the troll, still stuck in his slime, still angrily stuck in his ways. Oh, you naughty children, just wait until I get out of this mess I'm going to! Oh. Gobbler, watch your words, sir. Remember, it's hard to take them back even though you've said them when you're angry. The green gobbler looked at Fairy Ashley and began to calm down. Fairy Ashley had that effect on people. Equia nudged Kofi a bit so that he would speak. I, 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 I didn't take your key. Gemma thought it was mine, so she gave it to me. I understand, said the troll calmly, but it's mine. <clears throat> May I have it back, please, he asked. Kofi handed him the key and the troll graciously thanked him. The troll turned to Equia. Now, if you don't mind, little one, can you unglob me? He asked. You promise you won't hurt anyone, she asked. Of course not. I just eat lettuce all day. I'm not scary. Okay, Equia said. She snapped her fingers and the green gobbler was unglobbled. Thank you. Come with me. I have something to show you. They all followed the green gobbler a deep, a bit deeper into the forest until they approached a large door as an entryway for a stone wall. The green gobbler took out his key and unlocked the door. The friends followed him through the door. The friends stood in amazement at an enormously beautiful garden that stretched as far as they could see. There was lettuce, spinach, carrots, tomatoes, potatoes, and fruits galore. Whoa! This is all yours? asked Gemma. Yep, but I only like to eat lettuce. Would you like to stay for dinner? asked the green gobbler. Sure. Fairy Ashley and the friends began to gather fruits and vegetables and munch and talk together picnic style until the sun started to go down. Quasi, of course, just nibbled on the sweetest berries he could find. Gemma stood up once she realized how late it had gotten. Ah, I have to go. My family will be worried about me. Tell Louis we said hello, said Kofi. I will, said Gemma. Sorry about the misunderstanding, Green Gobbler. Not a problem at all. You're always welcome back to the garden, he said. Well, Inguzo babies, I'm glad you were able to meet our green gobbler gardener. I think it may be time for you all to go back before bedtime, said Fairy Ashley. The Inguzo babies bid their farewells and with an uhuru found themselves right back at their campground. Ugh, I'm pooped, said Ama. Me too, agreed Equia. Thanks for the story, Kofi. Huh, no problem, guys, said Kofi. And as they all tucked themselves in, into their sleeping bags to rest, Quasi felt something in his pocket. Curious, he pulled it out and saw that it was a piece of lettuce. Ugh, gross, he whispered just before he and the rest of the Inguzo babies fell fast asleep. Until next time on the Inguzo Babies podcast.